Part two is auto skewing. Auto skewing is a very important part of our algorithm and it is very unique to electrosonics. Nobody comes close to doing auto skewing. Auto skewing is where we take a mathematical factor added to the other microphones based on amplitude, frequency, and time for an input based on signal received at that input. So what we're doing with this auto skewing, again, based on amplitude, time, and frequency, is we're recognizing a signal. So let's say you've got your inputs here. You've got input one, two, three, and four. And a signal is begun to generate at microphone one. Somebody starts speaking at microphone one. In other auto mix systems, what happens is when that voice starts speaking, if it is amplified within the room, let's say we've got speakers in the room, and they're being amplified by that microphone, that microphone's getting amplified there, what happens is the other microphones in the room are gonna pick up that amplified signal. And so what do they do? They turn on too because they're picking up the guy talking. That introduces the possibility of comb filtering and so on. Example, you've got an instructor like wearing a wireless mic like I am right now, and he's talking in a lecture hall, and he moves from the front of the room over to the side where the podium is at that has a gooseneck mic. With a regular auto mixer, what can happen is his voice will be picked up by both microphones and turned on at the same time. But because his mouth is only this far from the lavalier, and it's this far from the uh, gooseneck microphone, what you end up with is comb filtering and his voice shifts, kind of gets a little nasally because you're losing frequency content in the audio. When you go to a single source, you always get better audio. Auto skewing says there is a factor we're applying to this signal and it's based again on this signal's amplitude, frequency, and time. As people talk at it and the more they talk at it, the stronger the auto skewing becomes. And what happens then is when this microphone hears the same signal and tries to pass it into the mix, auto skewing says, no, wait a minute. We already have that signal here at number one, so we are not going to open up two significantly. There's a little bit of a gain increase, but only because it's kind of playing a little safety trick there. In case you suddenly move from the lavalier microphone and lean into the gooseneck and become significantly louder at the second microphone, it'll then pan over to the second microphone quite quickly. But if you use auto skewing, and it's built in, you have no choice, it, you can't turn it off. But what auto skewing does is it prevents other microphones from amplifying within the room. This is an important factor in our uh, auto mix algorithm. So keep auto skewing in mind. It'll prevent comb filtering, and it will prevent microphones from opening for the amplified signal of other microphones in the room. There's another factor where auto skewing is very powerful in our system. Let me show you how that works. Audio conferencing. You have room A in London and room B in New York. Each has a microphone and each has a speaker. And New York speaks to London and London speaks to New York. If you have electrosonics auto mixers in both rooms, what happens is the, the incoming signal from New York and London is treated as an incoming signal as like a microphone. It becomes part of auto skewing. So what happens is the signal from New York, New York speaks, the signal tracks into London, gets amplified within the room, and then gets picked up by the microphone in London, and that tries to send it back to New York. That's your echo that you're always trying to cancel going back to the far side. What auto skewing does is we bring this signal in, but before we bring it into the uh, system, we put it into the same auto mixer as we have this microphone. So the signal from New York comes into the room through our auto mixer and then goes off to the amplifier for the speakers. Now we have auto skewing at work. London speaks, auto skew is applied to that signal, London is, uh, New York is amplified in London. The London microphone picks it up, but the auto mixer says, wait a minute, I don't need to open this microphone for this signal because I already have it coming in from New York. And so it suppresses 
the capability of this microphone to open up for the amplified signal from the far side and helps break the acoustical coupling link between the two microphones. This is very important because this adds about 15 decibels of echo suppression to your system without an echo canceller. If you incorporate then a DMTH4 into the system, which is our conferencing unit that also has an echo canceller built in, what it allows you to do is combine echo canceling and auto skewing to get a very effective suppression of the echo in the far side. Any questions?